Welcome back. In this video, we're going to show you how to write data from a Polar's data frame directly into SQL Server. Now, I recently started the process of switching some of my SQL Server data flows from Pandas to Polar's, and I've been amazed by the dramatic increase in performance. In testing both versions of one particular job, I saw the time go from 10 minutes to just under a minute. For me, this was validation that making the switch to Polar's was definitely worth it. With that said, let's show you how to write 30,000 rows of data into SQL Server in a matter of seconds. Before we start coding, let's talk about the data that we'll be importing. We're going to use mock credit card transaction data. And I want to be clear that this data is randomly generated and it does not represent real credit card numbers or transactions. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the coding. So I'm going to come into this first cell here and I'm going to import Polars as PL. I'm going to run this just so we can start getting some helpers. And in the next cell down here, we're going to define our data variable. And then we're going to call the read CSV method. And then I'm going to grab this transaction here, this transaction data set. And we'll pull that in. And then let's go ahead and display this data so that we can see our, our information here. Okay, so taking a quick look at this data frame, you can see that we have 30,000 records and five columns. And once again, this is just transaction data that we want to take from the CSV file and push right into SQL Server. So we're gonna do that in the next cell down. I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit. And then I'm going to actually just copy and paste from my notes and explain what's going on. Okay, so on this first line here, we have our URI, which is basically our connection to SQL Server. Now we are using PyODBC to do that and the Microsoft SQL Server. What you also need to pass into this connection string is the server name and the database, as well as the driver you're using and a method of authentication. In my case, I'm using a, a trusted connection, which is an integrated uh, into my Microsoft account. So that is the URI, and it's gonna look different depending on what your database actually looks like and how you're kind of using it on your end. Uh, but that is something that's very essential here that we'll use on the next line as well. Now we're gonna take the data variable, which has our data frame, and we're going to call the write database method off of it. And within this, we need to pass the table name. So in our case, we're going to call it credit card transactions. And we're going to also need to pass the connection, which is our URI that we created just above. Now, the behavior of this function is to insert this data and basically create the table if it doesn't already exist. So in our case, right now, it hasn't existed on the database that I'm going to be writing this into. And so it's going to create that for me. Now, if you already have the table existing in the database, you do need to use another argument called if table exists. And you can look at the documentation uh, to see kind of the values that you can pass there. But there's different behaviors that if the table is detected, it will do certain actions, right? So you can replace, uh, you can append the data that you're writing in, and you can do all sorts of um, kind of, I shouldn't say all sorts of uh, options because there's only three. Uh, but there give, it gives you some different options for managing when the table does exist. Now, once again, it does not exist in our case, so we're going to go ahead and just run this. Okay, and you can see it ran in a very short amount of time, just about two seconds. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the actual SQL Server database just to make sure that it's in there correctly. So I'm going to be using a VS Code plugin uh, that's created by Microsoft. It's called SQL Server. You can search it right here um, in the extensions marketplace. I'm going to go ahead and just open it up here. And I already have a connection made. So that has already been established. I'm just going to come to my tables here and I want to refresh that. Now you can see that we have our credit card transactions and I can select the top 1000 just to see if it's working correctly. And as you can see, we have our data in SQL Server. Okay, so after seeing how this function works, I hope that you have the confidence to start implementing this into your own data pipelines. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. 
and we'll catch up with you at the next video.